I uh, hope we can start now. And you know that uh, Dmitry, uh, he is moderating our session today. And we have an hour for answers and questions. So uh, please say, uh, write them down and send uh, via chat. And then uh, we'll see those questions and Dmitry will read them and then we'll be able to discuss it. Okay, so let's start. Dmitry, do we have some questions? What uh, means the activation of the system or the active response to environment what that, that are given in the report of the um, firewall software? So activation of the system, it means uh, increasing of some energy and decreasing of stress, this activation of the system. Uh, but what do we have in report? Dmitry, do you remember what do we have in the report about activation? Yeah, I can just open it right now for like to share the screen. Which part of the report you mean? Can you please uh, specify that? In the summary, okay. Uh, this person is asking about the interpretation that is given in the conclusions and recommendations in uh, the um, uh, the end of the report where it's, uh, the stress, energy and balance are being um, described. So the question is about, uh, wait a second, what is the activation of the system? So it's activation of the system according to the uh, Biowell's uh, understanding is the uh, stress level of the person. So the, in the uh, early GDB systems, the um, stress parameter was called activation coefficient. So only in the Biowell it was renamed into stress parameter. So now the activation of the system is actually stress level. So also uh, the next question is about balance uh, and sometimes there are two different balances, optimal and then balance autonomic disbalance, all in the same report. It's better, Oberreiter, if you can uh, just quote this kind of, um, uh, just this uh, paragraph of text, if you can, it's, it's better for you to, um, just copy it to the chat window so we can read the complete sentences. Maybe there are just some mistakes in our report so we can just fix them. So just, it's better to uh, specify them, okay? Uh, regarding energy balance organs, what means if difference is very high in left uh, hand? What if difference is very high in right hand? Okay, so this question is very simple. If you um, watch the video that was uh, recorded last week about the Biowell interpretation, uh, I'm explaining there about uh, what, what me means when the, there is a dominance of the right hand and what is uh, the meaning of when the dominance of the left hand. So it's given in that uh, video recording, it's available on your YouTube channel, so please go there and uh, take a look. So it's directly connected with the left and right hemispheres of the brain and uh, the functions that they're fulfilling. Um, next question is, what if difference between with and without filter is extremely high? Dr. Kortkov, can you explain it? Or is it explained somewhere specifically? Of course, it is explained everywhere, <laughs> in all books and everywhere. But to make it uh, short, with filter, we take only physiological state of a person. Without filter, we take uh, psychophysiological. So uh, without filter, we are recording energy state under the influence of emotions, stress. So if you have big difference, it means that there are very uh, high influence of stress. And then you need to do something because our goal not just to fix problem, but to help people to resolve this problem. So to resolve this situation, when you see the big difference, first of all, you need to do breathing exercises. And this again, I describe this in different topics and different books. So breathe deep, inhale and outhale for 10 times deep into your chest. And then let people relax for several minutes and repeat measurements. 
then you will see effect of the stress. Plus, of course, you need to pay attention to balance program. What would be misbalance between uh, left and right or sympathetic parasympathetic? And of course, you need to pay attention to chakras, where they are shifted to and how high. So this allows you to understand what's going on with your patient and then to help them to avoid this situation. Because you, we know that stress, and this is a very serious situation for many people, even now when they, a lot of people have fear and then they are frightened by situation, by newspapers and TV. So that's why that is very, very important to help people to overcome their stress. Okay, so the next question is uh, from Bogdan. Uh, he is uh, doing research in environmental activity and uh, uh, with water. So his question is that if under the influence of some action, human action, the level of area and intensity decreases and deviation is falling and entropy has a negative indicator, can we interpret it as an increase in the level of structures in water? and whether we can infer the percentage of structural water on this basis. Can we also conclude that water with negative entropy is the so-called fourth phase of water according to Professor Pollack? Okay, that's a very good question. And uh, really, if you see change of water parameters under human intention influence or under some other influence, of course, it indicates transformation of water to more ordered state or more structured state. So that is really so. And we can evaluate by different parameters. Uh, sometimes it is increase of area, sometimes it decreases because it's all different parameters. Same as, uh, of course, uh, entropy is very important because it shows stability of this particular water. So the more stable the water, the lower the entropy. But you need to understand that we are evaluating entropy in Shannon, uh, like Shannon entropy. So we evaluate this entropy in accordance with uh, initial measurement. So that is why we have relative entropy, but not up absolute entropy. Because uh, in principle, to measure absolute entropy, it's impossible. Impossible. You need to understand this. So uh, that is why your result when you have a change of water parameters, that's really significant. And if it is significant change that you can evaluate uh, both by uh, analysis, uh, when you press this button analysis, or uh, go to Excel file, uh, save all the data and go to more detailed Excel or mathematical program or statistics program, then of course you have significant data. As uh, to evaluation of uh, percentage of structured water, it is impossible at the moment because uh, the only direct method to detect the amount of structured water in uh, liquid, those are the method of laser scattering. And if you look to my book, uh, to our book of uh, the emerging science of water, uh, we are describing this uh, method and experiments of Professor Carnaval. But of course, this is very expensive device. It is very complicated technology. It takes very careful laboratory conditions. So that's why it is impossible to compare our results with those results. Same as we can't tell what's, uh, how it is related to, um, uh, to water nearby the surface. Again, uh, what Pollock uh, developing, his ideas of this fourth stage of water, uh, this is mostly related to near surface water only. And it's not related to water in the volume. Maybe nearby surface we have this situation, but if you operate in normal uh, tube or normal vial, then you can't evaluate it. Would you be operating in thin, uh, <clears throat> uh, I would say, thin layers of water, then of course it would be indication. But it's different technology, different uh, approach. Okay. Thank you very much. So the next question is about the organ disbalance parameter. 
that is showing the dominance of right to left hand. So, for example, the question is when uh, this parameter is showing the dominance of right hand, so uh, the, uh, it means the activation of the left hemisphere. So, um, uh, according to our interpretation, so the organism is already resting, so it has already begun, or it just needs the rest. So otherwise, at this moment, is it um, sympathetic or parasympathetic dominating? Okay, so a very good question. If we look to balance program, we see that uh, left hand uh, green bars, they are related to right hemisphere. And as shown by our many experiments comparison with uh, HRV, it is related to sympathetic nervous system. And sympathetic, we know those are the system of tension, of activation. Uh, so right hand related to left hemisphere, it is parasympathetic. It is more relaxation. Of course, it's not precise evaluation. Of course not. It's just some uh, some evaluation that is related to other other measurements. But uh, at the same time, we can see we can have only practically one method of uh, HRV for measuring sympathetic parasympathetic balance. So it gives you some indication. But of course, if you have dominance of uh, sympathetic, and if, if you have more than, uh, for example, six, seven bars highlighted with uh, left hand dominance, then it is dominance of sympathetic nervous system. Uh, in a time, maybe next week, um, I plan to make a special lecture discussing different cases. And in this lecture, I will show you specific cases of this uh, sympathetic parasympathetic balance. So it will be very clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what, what would you just tell to this person uh, as uh, the summary? Is it already activated or it just wants to be activated? If you see the dominance. <laughs> you see, we are measuring at the particular moment. Mm -hmm. So if you have data, it is now. Then, of course, what we always recommend, please make some exercises with a person. Breathing, obligatory, mostly now in the condition of virus. You know that virus, it is um, now it's proven that it uh, it uh, damage uh, thrombocytes and blocks transport of oxygen to system. That is why it is so important to increase income of oxygen to the system. That is why breathing and breathing with good air it's important. That's why it's totally stupid to keep people at home. Totally stupid. It's, uh, it's a crime. People should go outside, should go to parks, to forests, uh, should have fresh air and breathe this fresh air. At least one, two hours per day you should spend outside. Then it is at least some help to your immune system. So that uh, it means that you, we are measuring what we have. We have if you make some exercise, of course, you will see different information. Because if you do exercise, that would uh, be uh, efficient for mm -hmm. sympathetic balance, then of course, you will have much better uh, situation. Okay, so my, my interpretation, my answer will be that if you see the dominance of the right hand, it means the organism is asking for rest it's not resting it's asking for rest so it needs the rest so it's reacting to some kind of uh, physical activity that you are doing and that it is not ready to fulfill this activity so it wants to take rest so it's just showing you that it needs the rest so you need to take it afterwards okay so next question is uh, by dr shankar from bangalore so uh, the question is how to align the chakras and make uh, I don't understand what you mean, make this, make size of chakra. You mean normalize the size of chakra, what? So we understand, to uh, align the chakras, you need to do meditation. The more balanced the person, the more aligned the chakras. You know that when I'm doing analysis of different people at our workshops, seminars, if I see someone with aligned chakras, 
Then I ask, oh, do you do meditation on a regular basis? Yes. It is obligatory answer. And we had many experiments with uh, yoga when people was coming to balance situation, meditative state, their chakras balanced. Of course, it needs some training. Meditation is not easy. It's not just click. You need to train for this, to be trained. But then, of course, it's possible. And same with size, because size of chakras uh, uh, is related uh, to the size of energy field. It's calculated from same principle, from amount of photons that you uh, emanate from your fingers. So, uh, and that's why we have optimal parameters of energy, and then it will be optimal for charges standing as well. Okay, in my uh, database, I have uh, cases when uh, people under um, antidepressants are showing absolutely ideal uh, sizes and uh, alignment of chakras. So they look like they're real yogis, but just because they're taking pills that are killing all the emotional expression. Yes, you're absolutely right. So there are many, not many, but there are situations when people have some uh, antidepressants, hormones, they totally block information transfer in the body. So they become themselves more um, like uh, stupid. Of course, not stupid, but like, more like. And of course, in this situation, we may have chakras aligned, we may have energy field in ideal situation, but it would be influence of particular drug, but not uh, their, their own efforts. And of course, uh, some people need it, no doubts, no doubts, but we understand how many side effects uh, this may have. Okay, the next question is uh, to me about the activity level. Uh, so uh, that when um, Francis is doing a test in environment regime, but using glove uh, longer than seven minutes, of course the software cannot detect which of the accessories you're using, if it's a glove or water sensor or if it's a Sputnik. So it, by default, if there's enough, uh, captures made, uh, the software will give you this activation coefficient, uh, activation, uh, a level of activity of environment parameter. But this parameter was designed only for interpretation of space, of environmental activity, not of the glove, not of the water sensor. So, um, no, it shouldn't be used. So, um, there is no meaning. So, just the activation level, the activity level of environment is used only for measurements of the scrutiny. Um, another question is about, uh, is when will be the book of the energy of health, understanding the principles of energy field analysis available on Amazon? Oh, I'm sorry, it, it is available on Amazon. I checked it uh, just a uh, day ago. It is available on Amazon, of course. If, it's, uh, if you have some problems, then of course I will check again. But uh, as, I, as I've seen, it is available on different languages, of course in English and uh, in other languages as well. Uh, so, but if you have some problems, maybe you can write uh, email to me and uh, I will check separately. Mm -hmm. So the actual uh, name of this understanding, the principles of energy field, yes? Yes, absolutely. The energy of health. Yeah. Okay. So if if it's possible, we will try to just find the link and send the link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends on the country and where where you are and to which website of Amazon you are going to, because Amazon has different uh, Amazon dot in for India. It has Amazon.com for United States, Amazon.de for uh, Germany, etc. So there are many Amazon websites. So please check which one uh, you are um, visiting. So I'm just uh, copying you the link of this book um, in the chat. So please take a look. So I just oh, for American website of Amazon.com. So it's there. Uh, so you can take a look. So there is a Kindle version and paperback version. Both both are available. Um, let's go next. 
Um, I have seen several times chakras very balanced but small size and very low immunologic system or low nervous system. Have you observed this? Yes, of course. Of course. This is again very important indication for you and uh, in particular at this moment because you know that we are on uh, endangered by this virus and it will be on and on. Don't expect that after a couple of weeks or one month it will be over. No, it will be forever because we live in the world of bacteria, viruses, and they just mutate. If they kill one virus, then immediately it will be substituted by another virus. So the only way how you can protect yourself, not by mask, not by gloves, it's not nonsense, total nonsense. It's only for specific situations when people walk with many people. Uh, you need to protect yourself by your own immune system, by your own energy field. So if you see energy field strong, stress level low, immune system in uh, green zone, then you are protected. Or even if you get virus, it will be some days and with high temperature, don't uh, blow the temperature and then you will be cured. But of course, if Im immune system is low, energy field is low and stress level is high, then we can expect whatever. You know that uh, all people who have died from this virus in different countries, those are mostly people of old age or people who had some uh, multiple problems. And so that's why it's absolutely clear, understandable what we should do. And um, BioWell is a tremendous tool to help it. Because you can show people, look what you have, and then give them step-by-step -step recommendations what should be done. So uh, I can add one thing uh, for this question is uh, that the level of balance of chakras and the size of the chakras are absolutely independent parameters. So the level, the uh, balance of chakras is how harmonized and how good you are controlling the situation at the present moment. Overall, how holistic you are, how integral the body is. And the size of the chakras is just what amount of energy do you possess now? You can be absolutely exhausted and tired. So the sizes of the chakras will be very low, very small. But at the same moment, you can still control the situation, be in harmony and uh, well balanced. So then these chakras will be aligned, but the sizes will be small. So the next uh, question is, um, I, it's, yeah, well, but it's again about, uh, from Dr. Shankar, it's about uh, chakra sizes increase, but not balance. So these are two different processes. The balancing is the level of control. The size is the number uh, and amount of energy that you possess. Two independent parameters, they shouldn't be uh, happening together. It, it's, it's different things. So next thing we're going um, <clears throat> in environment scan when there is increase in area intensity, energy deviation, entropy is negative. Does it mean that the energy of space is stable, active or unstable, overactive? Is it similar with water or which parameter should we see in environment scan that we can say that the space energy is stable? So I will uh, better answer this question as this parameter was developed uh, by me many years ago. So um, actually it's very simple. Um, the activity level or the entropy or the deviation parameters are all based on the variability of the signal. The high is the variability of the signal. The high will be the deviation, the high will be the entropy, and high will be the activity level of environment. So activity, it's more, it means less stable. Lower is the activity level or the variability of the signal. Higher is the, uh, will be the stability, but the entropy will go down the deviation will go down and the activity level of environment will go down together with it. So yes, the lower is the variability, the more stable is the system or the environment in which you're working and making measurements. 
Next, um, in my experience, I found that parameters are changing in 10, 20 minutes after drinking water. Balance is becoming better. Should people drink water before measurement? Dr. Kortkov, I think you... <laughs> Uh, but this is, uh, yes, you are absolutely right. If you drink good water, then for people who are unexperienced to this, they increase, uh, improve their parameters. We have many, many data of this kind. That's why I always tell you should drink good water. And look again to, my, to our book, uh, The Emerging Science of Water, where we describe what does it mean, good water, and how we can prepare this at your home. But of course, if people drink good water like myself all the time, I wake up in the morning and I have several glasses of good water with lemon. Only then later on, in a couple of hours, I have some breakfast. And then, of course, if I drink water, I wouldn't change my parameters because I'm used to this. If people are dehydrated, that most of people are, then, of course, you will see this uh, tremendous change of parameters. But our uh, intention to see condition of a person at this particular moment. That is what's important. You don't have to give them ex uh, some exercise before measurement. You take initial measurement, then you offer something. And it's very good to offer this. Uh, breathing exercise, then uh, some uh, moving exercise, then drinking water. Because it would show them what they need for their life and then maybe maybe later on they would follow good advices to breathe good air to have some physical activity and drink good water mm -hmm. okay um so this is uh, we don't have any other questions everybody understands everything <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have any questions, um, one more topic. You know that now we have these uh, lectures uh, on our YouTube channel and we plan to make it on a regular basis. So uh, next week I plan to make a lecture about interpretation where uh, I will be discussing different cases. And of course we'll uh, record this and then we'll send the link to everybody, so you will be able to watch it. And it will be kept at our YouTube channel. Then um, I was asked many times to make another lecture on Nazca mummies. And again, I will make this lecture at some moment, at some time. So if you have some particular topics that you would like us to discuss, please send us a message, email, and we'll plan how to and when to make because uh, you see that um, we had several webinars with active participation and it is good, but still uh, it is more like lecturing and answering questions, still. One way, if we meet face to face at our uh, workshops, training, then it's other story, one story. Then it's not only we show you what to do, but you show us how you do this and that's important. Plus, this uh, response uh, from yourself, it's very, very important part of our activity. And we change something, we can change something, we can improve something only if we have response. So if you have some ideas what we can do to improve this, if you have some uh, topic that you don't like, please send us everything. The more negative moments you define, the easier for us to improve. And you know that uh, we are uh, operating very actively. We have many projects, many plans in our company. We're developing several new ideas and I hope that uh, this year we'll present it uh, to the world. And unfortunately we are delayed as everybody <laughs> by this situation. That's why we have maybe half a delay uh, because of all this situation, but we go step by step steadily. We are in good situation, in good position, so that's why we plan to improve and develop. Dimitri, would you like to add something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we have two more questions from Francis and from Dr. Shankar. 
Um, so about uh, the measurements with Sputnik again. So um, if the activity level change from uh, green zone to blue zone to hypoactive or chepogenic, is it good or not? Well, it depends what you want to get. So for example, uh, each of these zones, you have the interpretation in the software, what this kind of environment is good for and what it is not good for. So if the low activity place is very good for meditation, so like nothing will disturb you, but it's not good for active, uh, active uh, work or uh, physical activity because it's uh, not supporting you. So when, if it's your working place or your sleeping uh, place where you sleep, um, to have this kind of very low activity that's going to the blue zone, um, it's not a good thing. So it will not support your restoration of energy through the night. So uh, Dr. Shankar is telling us that he has worked in environment, uh, made environment scans many times, and after correcting, um, the, he has seen the changes in the report. So the activity level has got increased. Um, the only question to, uh, I, I have a question to Dr. Shankar, what kind of uh, corrections have you made? So what have you done with the space to buy it? to correct the geopathic stress. So, but in other uh, things, if you have this kind of measurement um, and uh, you have repeated them several times, we are encouraging you to take part in the Science uh, Information Spirit Congress this summer. It will be in online mode, so you can present your uh, cases, your uh, research that you have made um, a presentation in online form like this in Zoom and we will give you some time to show your results. So just if you have enough cases, it's going to be an interesting topic for us all to know. He's, uh, uh, he has used Vortex Harmonizer Pyramid. Okay. So, well, if you have enough data, so it, if it wasn't measured once, but you have repeated this several times, and these results are reproducible, you're welcome to somehow describe this, at least write one page uh, about your measurements and uh, share them with us. And we will uh, then uh, possibly give you some time and during the Congress to present your results. Um, do, you, do you know about terms of next Congress in St. Petersburg? Because as I received information, this year is canceled. No, it is not canceled, Bogdan. It is transferred to online mode. So we will make it like this. So um, if you are observing and monitoring the activity of the Congress, last year we were already thinking about uh, having a remote uh, online Congress. And last year already one participant, one uh, presenter was from Brazil. And he was giving a presentation sitting in his house in Brazil. So we already tested it and it worked fine, absolutely. So uh, this year, you don't need to spend money to travel. You don't need to sp um, spend money for the hotels, etc. You can just uh, prepare the, uh, res uh, the results of your research, whatever research in any place of the planet where you are, and you will have the opportunity to, to show them if you have enough statistics data. So you are welcome if you have uh, your water measurements your results, they're structurized and you are ready to write them down. We will be very interested to see them and we will uh, give you some time uh, during the Congress. Okay, so just nothing is cancelled, everything will be but in online form. Um, well, the contact details uh, for Shankar, so like um, uh, you can just uh, send these uh, all details to our working addresses. So you can find them all on the buywell.com website. So you have my working address, business address there. There is in a common uh, buywell um, company, you at buywell.com. And uh, if you, some of you want to share something with directly with Dr. Kortkov, um, if Dr. Kortkov, if he's uh, not against, he can share his uh, private email address. So you can send uh, these kind of cases or uh, you just uh, can send the papers that you prepared directly to him.
Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in any way, uh, whenever you are sending this, we'll receive it, uh, and then we'll, of course, we'll spend time to answer you. Um, and uh, there's a question: uh, if uh, um, they can call, they can send you a case to your account so that you can analyze it. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. You're welcome. My account is KK. Just to let us K. And Dmitry account. Um, yeah, my my ID is. I'm just writing them in the chat, so it's better. It will be easier for you to copy them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're welcome to send. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marco is asking about coronavirus. <laughs> Uh, there, there was a separate video by Dr. Korotkov about coronavirus and it is published on YouTube, as I know. But uh, I can add some topics because now, after two months of this station, we have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. so, of course, no doubts that we have this virus. No doubts. From other hand, uh, there are, it is not as dangerous as, it is, uh, as was told. You know, there are several countries at least who did not make any special measures and they don't have any more cases than anywhere, any, uh, anywhere in the world. Of course, it was necessary to block all um, um, gatherings, like theaters, concerts, uh, like big crowds. Uh, then, of course, that's absolutely clear. Uh, but to close everything, that is totally stupid because we know that a lot of people lost their income, a lot of people lost their business, and this will be tremendous blow to millions of people. Millions of people will be jobless worldwide, not only in some particular country, and this will be much worse result compared with what we have with health situation. So again, we know many people who had this virus, had one, two, three days of uh, illness, but then they recovered. We have many cases when people had this virus but did not feel it even. because it's the same with any influence, any uh, influenza, uh, any uh, seasonal virus. That if you have strong system, of course you will overcome it. Of course you may have some illnesses, but then it will be nothing. With this virus, the um, main recommendation is as follows. You know that this virus, it comes to your breathing system, to your mouth and to your uh, throat. And then from there, it starts developing in other parts of the body. So if you feel something not good, or if you had contact with some suspicious people, the simplest topic is as follows. You take one liter of water, you put there one uh, big spoon of uh, um, carbon, uh, carbon uh, soda, you know, this uh, sodium, sodium carbon. It's, it's simple, you know, it's simple and cheap and you have it, we have it everywhere. And you boil this water with this sodium. Then you breathe this vapor. It is hot vapor. So it's, you need to be used to this. Maybe you can cover yourself with something. And then this hot air with sodium comes into your throat, into your mouth. Sodium breaks uh, the coverage uh, of this virus, breaks down. And then this hot temperature, it destroys the virus. So this is the best cure. In Russia, it's very well known cure for children, we do it all the time. Dimitri knows this. <laughs> with all your children, you. And with my children, I had uh, many children, three, three, <laughs> three grandchildren. So we, we do it all the time in case of some problems. So that is why if you feel something wrong, just do it. In any case, it will be very helpful. In any case. And in case of virus, it will be even beneficial. But still, uh, this is not as dangerous as it was told. And uh, we expect that it will be again in the game. So don't uh, think, don't uh, that it will be over in, in a month. No, it's normal uh, influence from environment. 
from our, <laughs> I would say, uh, from our bacteria. We have bacteria, we have viruses, we have fungi, we have all this micro ball that is much bigger and much more abundant than our, ourselves. So, but let's be healthy. Yeah, well, small question. It, it was asked many times, but still. Um, is it possible to detect a coronavirus with a uh, biowell? What do you mean? <laughs> Very simple question. Do you mean virus itself? No, because only with um, very high, um, very complicated procedure using um, uh, these biophysical methods, you can multiply this virus from saliva and then detect it. But people who have this virus, this is just disease. It's not different from any other disease. So with BioWell, you can detect whether people are healthy or unhealthy. But never ever you would tell whether it is coronavirus or some other virus. Because I can I tell you again, uh, together with coronavirus, we have many other viruses and many other problems. I just received my Sputnik and I wanted to use it to see how room's energy changes when adding plants and decor to make a room have a more positive vibe. What advice or suggestions do you have to get the best reading? So, uh, first of all, you need to look to website sputnik.biowell.com because there we have many different cases. And if you look to many cases, you will see that uh, we have several types of Sputnik measurements. One type is uh, very short, when you need to do to go to some environmental place, uh, in nature, and to measure different uh, places in nature. Then it is enough to take measurements for 12 minutes. And then you can make uh, analysis of these different energies and their variations. Another type, when we are measuring some event. For example, we have a group of people who are meditating and you want to see effect of meditation. Or you do it yourself, or you, do, you want to test some, uh, in terms of some particular device on water, on environment, on Sputnik, because the principle is the same. Then you need to have background measurement for at least half an hour but I prefer one hour, and then to add this uh, influence. For example, a group, group of people are sitting, they just uh, discussing something for half an hour, for one hour, and then they go to meditative mode. And then we can detect this. Same with device. For example, you can find uh, results of uh, biocore. It was done several times. Uh, so uh, I test it on the water. So I test water with environmental mode for 40 minutes, for one hour. And then I turn on a biocore uh, with sensor connected to this water glass. And we can see effect. So, but if you want to see long run effect, for example, as you've told, you have plants that you bring to, some, to the room and you want to see, would it be some effect of those plants on the room? Then, of course, I suggest you to do it for many, many hours. Not even for 10 hours, 20 hours, but maybe for many days. And we have an uh, example of this type of experiments, when uh, we have some, uh, for example, device that uh, designed to change the atmosphere, in the room to improve it, or when we have some devices that are supposed to have some uh, structuring effect on space, and then we can really see this effect, but for longer, for several in, in several days. So that is why you should, I would suggest you to run Sputnik for maybe half a day without your plants, and then to bring your plants uh, to install them and to proceed with uh, several days because of 100% sure effect would be slow, not immediate. It will slow uh, affect the environment. Okay, next. 
the next question is from Peggy. Um, so please address how to make interpretation of increasing energy reading and increasing energy after an energy session is positive and yet the increase in energy can be considered as a concern when addressing the physical body. So how to make interpretation of energy and energy increase after different sessions? Uh, we have an optimal zone of parameters, of different parameters, and we have a decrease or increase uh, beyond this optimal zone. And you should pay attention not only to energy, but to all other parameters. So effect of any sessions would be effect on stress level. And of course, we expect the stress would be in optimal zone. Effect on balance. And you see this unbalanced program, pro program. And the more balanced uh, the brain, left and right side, the less uh, highlighted bars we'll see. On chakras, and you understand, the, so the more aligned chakras, the better. And of course, on energy. So it may increase, decrease. It's not uh, so important, energy. Because it depends on what would, was the initial situation. But when it comes to optimal zone, last diagrams come to optimal zone, then it's very positive outcome of any treatment. Uh, yeah, I can add a little bit to this. Uh, so it's very important when you do the interpretation with the bio well, when you see energy, it is increasing. You have to observe if the energy has increased due to some one or two, some specific sectors, or it has increased overall, generally in all 10 fingers. So if you see the increase in some specific sector, so there is some kind of uh, hyper emission in that place. So it can be some kind of uh, um, identifying that there is a problem there. But if you see that it's generally overall, especially, uh, especially you can see it on the diagrams and area or energy diagrams, so that the overall energy or area has increased in general. So then it's overall like uh, positive, we can say effect. But if you see only some specific spikes or some specific sectors uh, has uh, reacted, so it can be some kind of uh, problem in that specific area. So the next question is from Glossy. Uh, so she's saying that um, about chakras, movement and alignment before and after energetic work, specifically in the EMF balancing technique. Um, so she has observed that right up to the session there is a big deviation in the uh, chakras um, alignment so they're misplaced so uh, sometimes it may seem more like a misalignment such as movement that, that occurs so so what i have been doing is using protocols before after session can be measured properly and also after measured again when the client returns to the next session, whose period between sessions can occur, for example, a daily, weekly, or bi-weekly, or even monthly. Um, so, what's okay. the, as I understood, so it's just the question about the uh, immediate reaction of the chakras to the energetic work. So we should understand that we deal with dynamic energy field. It's not a static uh, study of a corpse or just a static process in the body. We deal with dynamic system. And when you apply any influence, would it be external or internal, then obligatory field would respond. So any type of strong energy work, doesn't matter whether you do it with your own energy, or you do it with different instruments, would disturb the system. Because uh, any system tends to be in a homeostasis. Uh, it means that to find balance with the environment. And homeostasis is not only good, it may be very bad, may be very low, but still systems somehow 
uh, survive and balance it. When you change homeostasis, then of course system com come in perturbation. And you can expect uh, that all parameters may be in perturbation. That is why what we typically do after every any type of strong treatment, we can measure immediately, but in reality, it makes sense to take measurement only about half an hour, one hour later. Then it will, you give system time to balance somehow, to come to some homeostasis. And then you will be able to see what's going on. Of course, the best, uh, in the best to make it next day, day after day. Uh, then, of course, it will be possible to follow observation for a person in long run. Okay. Uh, well, you, you have uh, explained pretty good. So, yeah, the essence is that uh, you can do the measurement right after the session and you can see what will be the so-called the digestion time of this uh, person, of the influence that you have applied. So, for example, after such uh, intervention like energy healing work, it can take up to 20 or 30 minutes to see the results of this work. So maybe you need to adjust the protocol accordingly. So you have to do the next measurement like half an hour later, 20 minutes later, or maybe some kind of influences that you're applying, you should check them a day later, like Dr. Kortkov said. So it's just an empirical experimental work and you have to find out what is the best distance, a time distance from the influence to make the next measurement. So um, Ray is asking how can he continue the education beyond level one. So uh, you are welcome to go to the Biowell website, biowell.com and go to the learning levels. Uh, there are explanations of what levels of education do we have in Biowell company. And uh, also on the biowell.com website, you can find the list of all the trainers that are working worldwide. And you can connect with any of these uh, trainers in order to get the further training, the advanced level training or expert level training. So, and also you can see the list of events uh, on the website too, or on Facebook page where we post all the planned seminars and webinars. Well, like now we are all doing webinars, not seminars. So welcome and uh, everything is ready there. And I need to add that now we, have, we are recording uh, uh, training courses and we do it practically every week. And now we can find uh, many of these on our YouTube channel. And it will be more and more added, in particular next week, I will uh, present uh, my lecture about interpretation of data based on different examples. And of course, if you are interested in some other topics, of course, we are presenting those topics as well. Okay. Uh, so next question from Peggy is, um, I noticed after acupuncture, all the organ energy flipped to be high, but with the filter, they were all green. Prior, the profile was mixed. First of all, let's understand uh, what do what's the difference between with filter and without filter. Without filter, we take psycho-emotional state. So it means physiology influenced by your mental state, by your emotions, by your stress. With filter, we cut off this emotional side. We take only physio physiological side. So typically, um, readings with, with filter, they are much more stable and they have much less details compared with uh, without filter. So after acupuncture, we expect that you in, should, people should increase their energy readings. We expect this because acupuncture increases flow of Qi energy along the meridians. This is the goal of acupuncture. That's why it's not a big question. And of course, it balances, uh, first of all, physiological condition, not so much uh, emotional state. 
um, people may even have some stress because of pain, if it's because some type of acupuncture is maybe painful. But physiologically, it balances the system, and that's why you transform to red, uh, to a green zone with filter. And without filter, again, uh, repeat, we expect increase of energy. Okay, so the next, uh, th there was another question about filter from Ray. Is, are there any limitations of use of filter uh, versus no filter measurements? Or does it apply to all? Any limitations there? You see, only limitation you need to buy them. That's the only limitation. <laughs> So no limitation at all. You can use with every person, you can use filters, but of course uh, you need to use individual uh, filter for every person. That's obligatory. Okay. Um, there is a uh, question about the interpretation of the organs disbalance that's coming from uh, Lewis. But I would say that in, in, in order for answer this question i would just recommend to just i'm adding the link to the chat so um the one week ago i was giving a one hour lecture about the interpretation of the parameters in the software and uh, i have explained uh, in details the stress energy balance and organs disbalance parameters so just watch this YouTube video and uh, there, there is a uh, detailed explanation there. So there is no need to repeat it here again. So it's the same story. The left, right hands connected with the right, left hemispheres, etc. Next question is, can the Sputnik be used to detect the difference at the space of a room when Wi-Fi is on or off? It depends on uh, what the system of Wi-Fi you're using and where it is uh, positioned. Uh, because, and it depends on um, your room as well. So we did this type of experiments uh, and in some rooms you can detect nothing with some type of uh, um, Wi-Fi. Uh, with some rooms you can detect it. It depends because it's uh, typically in our environment we have not only your own uh, browser but many others as well. So it all depends, plus it strongly depends on where do you have your antenna. That's the main factor. Now, if you have antenna nearby your house, then of course it will be influenced very strongly. Yeah, well, in most, if you take the not uh, private houses, but the uh, multi-story buildings, there are tens of Wi-Fi's working in the same room that you can detect. So just turning one of them will not affect drastically the readings. So actually to detect the Wi-Fi, you don't need the Sputnik. There are specific um, multimeters for ele uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum meters that can detect specifically the um, EMF range of Wi-Fi. So if it's uh, 2.4 gigahertz or if it's uh, 5 gigahertz, so there are equipments for that purposes and Sputnik is uh, not actually made for that. Still we have some uh, experiments with uh, shielded rooms, so named Faraday cage. And there it was really a demonstrated difference in Sputnik readings inside the Faraday cage and outside. And Eriko in Brazil, he did this type of experiment, so it was shown. But for this, you need to have totally closed Faraday cage. So in ordinary room, uh, if you turn off your own Wi-Fi, it would be nothing. Because <laughs> 24 hours you, have, you are under the influence of electromagnetic fields. Next uh, question from Peggy. What does the inner noise represent on the glow? Is it used for calculations of parameters? Um, you see, inner noise, it is very specific parameter, which we calculate from the inner area of the fingertip. You understand? And uh, inner noise, uh, it is a reflection of photons emitted by the finger itself uh directly so 
it, in the, it is indication of very strong energy activity of the particular system or of the whole body. And in all our statistical analysis, in the noise, uh, it's indication of uh, very as any important parameter. So uh, it is indication of increased energy activity of the whole system. Uh, a question from Adolfo. Uh, how can we calibrate in offline mode? There is no such feature in the software. Uh, calibration can be made only online because the calibration results are saved on the Biowell server. So in order for calibration to be made, you have to have a connection to internet. Um, next question from Erika. When I calibrate all organs energy show on high energy, um, will it alter the following readings? Oh. Yeah, well, Erika, either you have to clarify the question. So all organs show high energy with the calibration cylinder or what? So actually, uh, those of you who are using Biowell 2, um, it's very easy to check if the calibration was done correctly. So once you finish the calibration, instead of uh, ejecting the calibration uh, insert, you just can leave it there, click the stress test, and do double, you know, uh, instead of fingers, um, scan the uh, metal cylinder two times and calculate it. Uh, so then you need to take a look at the energy parameter. So if you have done cal calibration correctly, so you clean the surface correctly, um, you clean the calibrator correctly, etc. So then the energy of the stress test of the cylinder should be somewhere between 65 and 70 on energy. So if it's there, it means you've done everything correctly. If it's somewhere else, it means you have done something wrong. What? You have to find out yourself by remaking it, cleaning, wiping everything again. Uh, so Erica, if you need uh, an exact answer to your question, please clarify it. Um, next question from Peggy is, could you let me know why HS parameter when it's equal to 0 0.34 is green on the area diagram? Should this be orange or pink instead? So I can answer this question easily because it's just a technical uh, thing. There is a green zone on the area diagram that is not uh, only in the above uh, zero. But if you take a look at this diagram, you will see that it's going from minus three to plus three. And the green zone is from minus 0 0.6 to one. And it, it is changing due to um, different age groups. So when it's 0 0.3, it's exactly the mid of the green zone from minus 0 0.6 to one. So of course it's a green zone. So. Um, next question from Adolfo uh, is, on the screen of the fingers, which means the colors, emotionally speaking? Colors on all the fingers related to spectrum. Uh, spectrum we represent as a, a curve of intensity. And if you open this curve uh, for a finger, you open one finger, then you see these different um, subscreens. Uh, it is a uh, subscreen of uh, uh, this uh, intensity, and then subscreen on, on uh, uh, lines uh, and subscreen of parameters. Then you see this um, spectral curve. And then we apply different colors in accordance with this curve. So it means that uh, for different colors we it's uh, we can literally say that it's different frequency of photons and uh, we from our experience the higher the frequency of photon the more i would say emotionally developed person so if you have red colors like in uh, a lot of uh, noise then of course it's lower level of frequency when we have blue colors, yellow colors, then it's high, more high frequency. Yeah, so just um, for everyone to understand that all the colors are artificial in, in our software. It's all just painting because uh, the actual 
uh, image is grayscale. So there are no colors there. So in our original raw image is only grayscale. It's only light. And we do not actually, our video cameras that are used in the BioWell devices are not able to detect the frequency of the light emitted from the fingers and from the air um, in essence. So the colors that we make is just coloring, as Dr. Korkov said, of the spectrum of uh, the grayscale. That's it. So of course, further away from the finger, the lower is the intensity of the light from the source. So of course, the intensity goes down. So we made this kind of coloring of like blue, azure, orange, pink, etc. So, but it's just we can color it in any colors you like, actually. Uh, maybe you've seen uh, Kirlian pictures, Kirlian photography, and they are very colorful. But it has nothing to do with spectral uh, uh, spectrum of this light. It's only the properties of photofilm. And for different photofilms, for different photo materials, they had different colors. In reality, uh, the light that we are detecting is intra ultra violet zone, mostly. And the maximum is 380 nanometers or 360 nanometers. So that is why we have specific, very special cameras that allow us to detect in uh, nearby, near ultraviolet and uh, visible zone in uh, blue range, which uh, ordinary cameras are not able to. Peggy is asking, is it possible that humanity is increasing energy frequency in decanting and increasing consciousness? Would you be able to see this in your database? Interesting that the Indian population feels their energy parameter is higher than other populations. Uh, I don't think that we can see a uh, mass effect of increasing consciousness. Uh, humanity is at a very low level of consciousness still. There are some people, but quite a few. In India, uh, people have higher energy because uh, there are a lot of sun and uh, people are used to this sun and that's why typically the energy is high. We know that when people travel from uh, our northern part of the world to warm countries, if they are in a beneficial environment, then they increase their energy. It's a typical effect. Next question from Erika. So yes, yeah, she was meaning that when she calibrates and then run all the fingers reading with the calibrator, then um, everything is in yellow zone. So it's correct because the calibrator is giving higher levels. It's usually closer to 70. So, but if everything is in yellow zone, so you have to check this actually if you have done correctly the calibration, okay? So I've just, earlier, several minutes ago, I have given you the instruction how to check this. Um, question from Peggy, are we missing some data by li uh, limiting the nanometers measurements? So I mean, uh, meaning the, I mean, spectrum of the light that is being photographed. Any device, any technical system can operate at some range. We have the range which we have chosen from many experiments, and you can look to uh, my published papers on uh, physical principles. So we've chosen this is as most beneficial zone for information. Uh, we had um, cameras that are detecting in uh, far ultraviolet. Uh, so it was some interesting experiments, but uh, not um, really big information that was uh, important so much that to develop to this side, to this uh, line. So we, meet, we did this type of experiments. We had some interesting results with uh, healers, energy healers, but not for ordinary people. That's why the uh, range that we are using to us at the moment, we absolutely content with this choice. Next question is from Jimmy. Uh, he's asking, what is the best resource or book to learn how to use correctly the Sputnik? Oh, well, there, there are no 
exact books there are uh, manuals that are available on the our website and also there is a um, webinar that is uh, that was recorded and now it's available about the application of uh, sputnik and other accessories and you can find it on um, youtube and uh, if you go to the uh, video lessons by Biowell company you'll see the links there also to the video lessons and webinars that were recorded by Dr. Kortkov and by me. So there you can find the links to different YouTube videos. And I have been giving a separate seminar about uh, application of uh, Sputnik and interpretation of Sputnik. So you can uh, take a look there. Also, there is a book by Dr. Kortkov about uh, energy of space uh, where you can read about different fields of application. Plus, we have published several papers with Dr. Kortkov about application of Sputnik and uh, um, use, uh, using it in different spheres of studies. So actually, you can read all these papers too. They're available on uh, bywell.com and also on emap.club websites. So next question, in area diagram, does each pixel is equal to a photon? Dr. No, Korkov. of course not. Each pixel, it is millions of photons bombarding this point. So that's why uh, we are measuring the energy of those photons based on uh, some physical principles. But of course, it's not equal to one photon, never. Next question is, is the room humidity cri uh, critical? Uh, you suggest 75%. Uh, living in a desert, it is typical to be 20-30%. Yes, of course, it's very critical. That is why you need to do calibration. Because with calibration process, we adjust instrument, your biowell, to the particular environment which you are in. And you know that uh, I'm traveling quite uh, intensively. Of course, not now. <laughs> I understand for several months we are blocked here. But uh, I can go to uh, Hong Kong, where there are uh, 75 or 80 percent of humidity and uh, zero level. And from there to Colorado, where there are same 25, 30 percent of humidity and 2,000 meters. And I have same reading for myself after calibration. So that is why, of course, it's good to have humidity at, at the range of 40-50%. It's normal for the best for human for life, but it depends on the place where you live. So after calibration, you will have stable results. So actually, uh, Peggy, it's not right. We do not suggest 75%. If you look at the passport of the biowell device that is uh, provided together with the Biowell device, you will see that the 75% humidity is the top of the working range of the device. So actually it's better to work in the normal conditions, something uh, from 40 to 60%. It's the ideal range. Of course, when you're working in extreme conditions, when it's higher than 75 or it's lower, like 20 or 30, it will be much harder to work with the device. First of all, when the humidity is very low, the static charge will be accumulated much faster uh, on the device itself and on the system. Uh, when the humidity is very high, so you will have evaporation and you will have condensation of water on uh, the glass very fast and it will be very difficult to calibrate when the humidity is very high. So it, it, it's a difficult thing and it's better to work in the normal conditions. Next question from Ray. What causes a previously scanned finger to suddenly become rejected after scanning and or rescanning additional fingers during the full scan? I've noticed this much more often with the upgraded biowell. So I would answer this question. Uh, it's the simple one. Um, please read the manual, download the manual from the biowell website. Uh, in the manual, you can find the chapter devoted to scanning of the fingers and you will find um, what are the 
automatic checkups that are being made by the BioWell software in order to uh, compare the fingers between each other and highlight some of them or you know, to find the red exclamation mark and in which cases you have the green tick and in which cases even the green tick doesn't mean that the finger is correctly scanned. So everything is given in this uh, manual and it, with the um, examples you can easily find it there. So I just really recommend to read it, reread it again. Okay. So when you have some rejected fingers, it means some of the checkups, automatic checkups that are being made by the software are rejecting whilst comparing the fingers between each other. You're doing, uh, you're having this finger different from the rest. So they uh, do, do not get into the whole uh, picture of 10 fingers. And one of the rules shows you the exclamation mark. So you have to read the red highlighted message. Um, next question, has anyone done capture on hospitals where they treat COVID-19 at the moment? Dr. Korkov. No, Dr. Korkov. nobody, never. Next question. <laughs> Can you address the actual size of chakras changing and what that means? I notice there is quite a range person to person. Mm. Well, again, the interpretation of the chakras and the size and some kind of norms are given in the manuals. You can read them and download from the BioWell website. Uh, regarding the sizes of the chakras, there are no strict norms. We don't have these strict norms yet. So there is a, some kind of the uh, optimal size, like five to 5.5 um, centijoules for chakras, but there is no optimal range there yet. So it can be right. Nato is saying that he has made only one scan of a person with the COVID-19. So all the levels were very low, but you see that nobody has collected enough statistics to tell something about the measurements of the bio well with the bio well of the COVID-19 patients. Okay, so if we don't have questions, then uh, again, we repeat that, um, please look at our website because every week we plan to add some new video uh, and um, you will uh, have many different uh, topics of discussion because we decided that it's easier, much more uh, easy for us to record some lecture and then to put on a website to, make, to have it available at any time. Because now, for example, we have 20 plus people at our uh, session, but uh, I'm sure there are much more people who was unable to attend at some reason. And then, of course, they, will be, they would be able to watch it later. Uh, soon, I hope, restrictions will be uh, postponed and will be able to have normal activity. Then, of course, uh, it would be more difficult with time for people. But then you can always find time at night in your free time to watch some video. The TV emission experiment on the 18th by Dr. Korotkov. I don't know what it is. Oh, of course, you should remember, you should understand. Uh, any devices, any electronics that was in 80s uh, was absolutely different from devices that we have now. And we understand that uh, computer screens that we had by that time, it was of this size. It was electronic tube inside and was uh, radiation from these tubes, no doubts. Now, we have, of course, all of us, we have flat screens and there are no radiation from the screens. It is not influenced to our eyes, to our information, but it's absolute different story. It's not radiation anymore. Can you please explain form coefficient parameter? For coefficient, uh, you can find again in our descriptions uh, the equations, how it is calculated. Uh, it's easy, uh, but in reality, it's one of the measure of entropy. Or 
from other point of view, it's a measure of in, uh, regular, irregularity of the contour. So the more irregular the contour of the image, the higher the entropy and the higher the phone coefficient. Yes, okay, so uh, we encourage everyone here to watch the videos that we have uh, already recorded. Um, and uh, actually, uh, I can, we can see from the statistics that even though we have only like uh, 20 people during the webinars, so the recordings already within a week is several hundreds of people have already watched it. So, and in essence, if you want to, you can also type, ask the questions in the com uh, comments section of uh, each uh, webinar and we can um, answer these questions there too. So they will be available for everyone. As long as these kind of uh, YouTube videos are educational materials that are now used for everyone. Okay, very good. Thank you everybody for participation. <laughs> and uh, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah.